Welcome to uh, Mathematical Methods Demonstration. Um, in this video we are going to be looking at a formal method for addition um, and looking at how we can take uh, a mathematical equation such as these three that I have here and use our formal column method for addition um, to solve these and get the answer out effectively. Um, hopefully the audio on this is okay. Uh, it's raining quite heavily at the moment so if there's a bit of background noise that's probably where that's come from. I'm going to start with the most straightforward of these, which is this one here on the left. Um, looking at these, if I was inspecting them and working out which one was going to be the most straightforward to do first, I would probably start with this one here for uh, the reason that we have five digits on, on each side of our addition zone. Here I've got six digits and a five digit number, and here I'm working with some decimals. Uh, and ordinarily, you know, we're going to need to think about how we lay this out carefully for this calculation. So I'm going to start with 37,217 added to 19,094. The key thing with all of these calculations is to make sure that when I am writing them down, I am making uh, a conscious effort to keep all of the numbers in the same columns. Ordinarily, if you've got squares, that helps you. One digit per square, you put the digits in the right columns and you make sure that the numbers are holding their place value. So for this one, because I've got five digits and five digits, I'm going to line them up directly underneath each other. So I've got my hundreds going to line up with my hundreds. I've got my ones going to line up with my ones. I've got my ten thousands going to line up with my ten thousands. And then I need to have my working space underneath, and I need to remember my operation here. Often we make mistakes because we're in a rush and we forget the operation that it's asking us to do and it's very easy sometimes to just switch from an addition to a subtraction so we just need to be careful of that. I'm going to work through here and uh, I'm going to have a look through these calculations here. Um, what, what, what I have spotted immediately uh, now that I'm recording this and it's not my practice one is that I've made an error in transposing my number here. Okay, I should have had 37,217 and I've actually written 37,214 because I was actually concentrating on what I was going to say. So, let's have take two, shall we? 37,217, that's better. I'm going to add to that 19,094. That's why it's always really important to make sure that we are double checking that the calculation we've been given is the calculation we're solving. As we can see, sometimes even we make mistakes with those. So I'm going to start, I'm going to work right to left. So I always work right to left. I'm going to start with the digits of the least value first, and we're going to build that up in case we have to do any carrying. Um, I'm going to start with seven added to four, which is going to give me 11. Now from my 11, I can't put 11 in here. What I need to do is I need to put the 1s and I need to carry the 10s into the next column. So I have that, like that. Now I'm going to add up my 10s column. I have 1 10 plus 9 10s plus 1 10. That's going to make 11 10s. So again, once I've added that on, I'm going to cross it off to show that I've done that. And then my 11 10s go in here. One there. And then I'm carrying one of those over into my 100s column. Now I have 200s plus 0 100s plus 100s. That's going to give me 300s. In my next column, adding my thousands, I have 7,000s plus 9,000s. Adding those together gives me 16,000s. So my 6,000 goes down there, and I carry my 10,000 over into my 10,000s column. Now in this column, I have 3 10,000s plus 1 10,000 plus 1 10,000. And in total, that gives me 5 10,000s. That then gives me my answer of 56,311. When I am carrying over, you only carry over one column to the left. And when I've added those on, I make sure I cross them off. Just so I'm making sure 100% that I'm including those in my calculation. If I move on to the next one, this is going to be really important in how I lay this calculation out. I'm going to start with the largest number at the top. You don't always get given the largest number first in a calculation. But I would always suggest putting the largest number on the top. You don't have to but often it's just, it just it makes a bit more sense in your head if you're adding the smaller number to the larger number rather than the other way around. 
Now I have six digits in my first number. I've only got five digits in my next number, which means, means I need to be really careful about where I place them. The way that you can think of this is I've got one one here and I've got seven ones in this number. So those two have got to be lined up underneath each other. So that means my seven is going to go here. So what you can do is if you're finding yourself making errors of these, is almost write this number here, this way around. Okay? If you know though that your eight ten thousands to make eighty thousand is going to go underneath your seven ten thousands here, then you can just line your number up like that. Okay? And take care to make sure that your digits line up underneath where they should. Operation comes in here. Then I'm going to work my way through. I have one one plus seven ones gives me eight ones. Four tens plus eight tens gives me twelve tens. So my two comes down here and I carry my one into my hundreds column. I have four hundreds plus zero hundreds plus one hundred gives me five hundreds. I have three thousands plus eight thousands which gives me eleven thousands. So I put the one down and I carry the one into the next column. Then I have seven ten thousands plus eight ten thousand plus one ten thousand. Now, if I put the one with the seven, I have eight ten thousand and eight ten thousand. Double eight is sixteen. So I'm going to have sixteen ten thousands here. So my six comes down and I carry over into my hundred thousands column. Then I have one hundred thousand and one one hundred thousand. Add those together, I get two hundred thousand, which gives me my answer then of 261,528. For our final calculation, I don't always get given numbers this easy. I've helped us out a little bit here by adding the point zero zero on the end. So what actually often will happen is you might have 360 pounds plus 19 pounds 34. And this is where a lot of difficulty can come in because here I have three digits and here I have four digits and if I was lining those up without thinking about my place value, without thinking about what the decimal point does to the number, I would wind up with a calculation that looked like this, which actually would be incorrect. Okay, because then what I'm doing, instead of adding £19.34, I'm actually adding £1,934. So that is incorrect, and we need to be really careful about setting our calculation up properly. What I now have then, if I think about this, is I have 360, and I'm adding to that 19.34. It doesn't always have to be pounds, often it's just numbers by themselves. My 19, my 10s are going to line up, my 1 10 is going to line up with my 6 10s, so it's going to go here. My 9 ones are going to line up with my 0 ones, which is going to go there. Now I still have my 0.34, so what I need to do is I need to pop that in here. This is going to give me a bit of difficulty unless I add something to my top number. So what I'm going to do is 360 is actually the same as 360.0 and 0. And I could keep going with zeros. The reason we don't normally put the zeros on the end of the number is they hold no value. They don't change the value of my 360. The reason I can put them in here is because I need them there to add to my decimal numbers that I have here. Now before I start my calculation, it's really important to make sure I get my place value correct. And too often what we do is we will add these digits up and we'll forget that actually we're adding decimal numbers here. And we'll forget the decimal from our answer and we don't put it in. So my advice is always to follow that decimal point down and start off with that in your answer. So you know that it's going to hold the value of the numbers for you. Now here I have zero one hundredths because this column here is my one one hundredth column. This column here is my one tenth column. I have zero one hundredths plus four one hundredths, which is going to be there, four. I have zero tenths plus three tenths, which is going to give me three tenths. And that makes sense because no pence plus 34 pence is 34 pence. Now onto my ones. I have no ones plus nine ones gives me nine ones. I have six tens plus one ten gives me seven tens. And then I have three hundreds plus no hundreds here gives me three hundreds. So actually when it comes down to adding the two numbers together it's straightforward. But the challenge of this one is this place value and is getting the decimal point in the correct location.